Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 5.0, and today is day 31. So today we are going to get back into opportunities, and we're going to start getting into sort of the documents compliance side of things, um, really how you start getting paid and uh, manage your documents inside of opportunities. So. Let's do that by jumping into the Opportunities applet, sixth one down, the handshake icon. And we are going to go into, let's pull up. So this is a new opportunity that I just created um, so that we could have an actual checklist for documents. So you wanna open the opportunity that you plan on uploading documents for, or at least viewing your checklist by clicking on the opportunity name. And then we talked about this details page or the details tab, if you will, yesterday. Now we're gonna head into the documents tab. So when we first come into the documents tab, you'll see several things. First of all, you have the status box. You've got a checklist type dropdown, a custom folder dropdown. In the top right, you have start a transaction. We'll come back to that later. But then you've got a big note here, right in the middle of the screen. And it says to start working with an opportunity, please select which checklist you want to use, right? That's not exactly what it says, but you get the gist. So in order to select our checklist, we wanna come over to this pick checklist type. And when I click on this drop down, you'll see that I've got several options. Now, if you're following along live with me, you may have very well different options. That's okay. These checklist types are created by your broker, MCA, compliance coordinator, sort of your leadership team working as a group to decide what sort of transaction types do you do in your market and what sort of document checklist should we have for those. So let's just assume that this is a residential listing that we're working with, right? Donald and Daffy wanna sell their house on 123 Quack Lane, so we're gonna do residential listing. Once I choose residential listing, you'll see that I have three different checklist types that will then show up. So I've got listed, I've got under contract, and then I've got closed. Now again, your checklist types may have different names, so don't freak out too much, but they should be rather similar. Now I've got the listed folder open, and you can see on the right-hand side, several things pop up. First of all, I can tell which uh, version or which folder I'm in right now. So this is the listed. You can see how many documents have been uploaded. Right now we haven't uploaded any, so we've got zero of 34. Underneath you can see add item, add comment, and attach multiple files. We're going to come back to all of that most likely in a future challenge, but just kind of showing you the gist of what this checklist looks like. Next, in the body of your document checklist, you've got status which will tell you the status of any one of your particular documents that you're loading. You can sort this column. Right now, they're all not uploaded, so it's not gonna change the sort. Then you've got requirements, and there are three different classes or statuses, if you will, of requirement, and that is required, conditional, and then you have optional. Required is something that your compliance coordinator absolutely requires and it's a document that should be used on every one of your listing, or in this case, based transactions. Conditional basically is if it applies. And more often than not, you'll see this little icon here that will tell you why, like when would it apply? So the MLS input form is conditional and it is required if used to record MLS information in order to list the property, include the appropriate MLS input form. You also have these little eyes next to it, and that's a space for your compliance coordinator to give you even more information about that specific requirement and document. Next, you've got document, and you've got this center column. What's the document actually called? And then your broker or compliance coordinator has the ability to even upload a sample. So if I click on listing worksheet, you can see an example of what this listing worksheet would look like. Now I can't do anything with it, but at least it gives me an idea later on when I'm looking for the appropriate document, what this should look like when I need to upload it. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of that document. The second to last column is the type, and that just basically refers to what type of document are we loading. 
And then finally we have file. So it'll say add a file if we have not put a file in this placeholder. If we have added a file from either .loop, DocuSign, or our hard drive, then the document name would actually be listed. All of these columns, again, like I said earlier, are sortable. So if I want to see just the required and then conditional and then optional, I can sort by this column. If I want to see my documents, I can actually list them alphabetically, right? So there's A to Z, and I can do Z to A. I can also sort by document type if you just want to see your addendums and then your disclosures and so on. I can also finally list by file. Now this would be alphabetical based upon the file name. So again, each one of these columns completely customizable. Now, what is this essentially? What is this list? These are the list of documents that are required by your compliance coordinator or broker for a transaction to be, I guess lawful is probably the best way to say it, legitimate inside of your actual market. Each one of these columns refers to, excuse me, folders refers to a different um, kind of stage or timeline of this transaction. Right now, this is before I even have it under contract. These are all the documents I need to list a property, in this case, in Texas. Under contract would be all of the documents that I need when I actually have a property under contract, right? And then finally, you can go through and see, all right, what's enclosed? Okay, the closing statement, copy of checks, etc. Again, just a real quick kind of pay attention moment. Not all of these checklists will look the same. So please don't look at my checklist and say, well, my checklist doesn't look like Marty's checklist. Every single office will have their own checklist, their own requirements based upon your broker compliance coordinator, or MCATL, kind of what is required of you as an agent in that market center. So that's it for today. Kind of a brief introduction to what the documents tab is all about and how do I actually choose a checklist and what the checklist refers to. We're gonna dive into this checklist even further tomorrow when we start getting into document upload and then we'll actually dive into further DocuSign training and showing you how to bring documents into DocuSign, how to get them out of DocuSign into command, several more exciting videos on the way. So stay tuned for that. Hope you're all having a great day. Thanks so much.